guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I have another Christmas decorate with me video. I will be doing the living room and the dining room and that includes my table setting and my Christmas tree. So if you guys are interested, then just keep on watching. But before we begin, let me remind you that subscribing is 100% free. So please click that subscribe button. And while you're at it, go ahead and click that notification bell so that you're notified every time that I post. I post every single week, sometimes multiple times a week. So trust me, you don't want to miss out. Alrighty, so first off, I'm starting with taking down all of my Thanksgiving decorations. Um, I, I don't know why taking down my decorations is always like a sad thing for me, but I always get a little, a little sad. But uh, I take everything down and I make sure to have a Christmas movie playing in the background and I light a Christmas candle to get me in the mood for Christmas decorating and then I pull out all of my Christmas decorations and I just lay them out all in front of me so I know what I'm working with and decorating especially Christmas decorating always seems to be a little overwhelming for me at first so I typically start with the pillows and the wreath so here I started with the pillows I just have all of my Christmas pillow covers Pillow covers are the easiest way to bring like whatever color theme that you're going for into the space that you're trying to decorate. So I got most of these pillow covers from Amazon, if not all of the pillow covers. <laughs> um, and then I switched my fall wreath for my Christmas wreath. And that's how I usually start off my decorating. I just get those things done and it just kind of sets the mood even more for me. And then I move on to things that I know for sure are going to go in a certain spot. So I knew that I was going to fill my apothecary jars with all of these chocolates. So I just went ahead and did that. And of course, I got all of the chocolates that have red or red and white wrapping and they happen to be all of my really favorite chocolates. So that worked out perfectly. So I do jump around a lot when decorating, so you'll have to forgive me, but um, first I just go ahead and make sure that the Christmas lights are working on my Christmas tree because that would be a total bummer to have it all decked out and then to find out that it doesn't even light up. So I always check the lights first. And this year I decided to try something different with my Christmas tree decorating. I decided to use mesh and ribbon, which I've never done before. And um, this mesh and ribbon, I would definitely suggest for you to get it wired so that it's easy to place in there. But um, this uh, mesh was quite difficult to work with at first, but I eventually got the hang of it. Um, it was like a red glittery mesh that I got from Hobby Lobby. I recently hauled it and um, I decided to go with the green ribbon and put it in the center of the red mesh just to add a little bit more brightness to it. I was torn between the peppermint ribbon or the green, but I just went ahead with the green and I'm really glad that I did because it looked really, really cute. And then next up I had these elf feet. <laughs> these picks and again all of this is brand new decor that I recently hauled I'll link that video down below for you guys to check out but I did stick some elf legs in there and then all of the picks and sticks I just tried to spread them out as evenly as possible and then I filled in any bald spots with my new ornaments that I recently got as well and they just tied in perfectly with the ribbon and the mesh and I just loved the final result. So how I decorate with ornaments is I like to group them according to color and then I just alternate between all of them just to make sure that I have it evenly spread out because I don't want one side of the tree to have mostly red and one side of the tree have mostly green. I just want everything to be even. And then later on I found these extra picks that I totally forgot about and um, even when working with picks, I try to have it spread out and kind of going in a zigzag formation, um, which I'm trying to show here. 
So I have it nice and spread out and everything looks balanced. And then after I'm done with all of the main decorating for the Christmas tree, I have all of my special ornaments. Um, if you know, then you know about my ornament tradition. Each year we get a different ornament to celebrate all of the Christmases that we spent together. So this guy is this year's ornament, the little minion, Bob, and he's with his teddy bear. So I write down the year on his uh, like feet <laughs> so I don't forget uh, which year we got him in. And then I hung him on the Christmas tree as well as all of my other ones. And it's actually really fun to go through and find all of your past ornaments. It's just, I don't know, something that I like to do with my husband and you know we just kind of reminisce on, oh do you remember that Christmas when we got this ornament? And it's just fun. And this one we also got this year. Uh, this is from our trip to New York. We actually went during or around Christmas time I should say. And um, so yeah I guess this year we had two new additions which was really cool. This one right here is actually from my sister. And she also gifted us this Iron Man ornament, which is extremely heavy. I mean, this is the most heavy duty, like really amazing quality, but heavy duty ornament. And so he was dragging down the entire tree. So I ended up having to hang him on like the really bottom branch so that he kind of stands on the floor as well and it, it just kind of looks like he's guarding the presents. I decided to move on to this wall full of windows next and uh, I got my husband to help me. <laughs> he helped me um, kind of strand the garlands in like a loop-de-loop -loop fashion like you see here and then on top I just ended up adding our Mickey Mouse wreath that we made together last year actually if you check out my Christmas decorate with me from last year um, I kind of show a little DIY on that and um, then I added some bows well my husband <laughs> helped me add some bows and then extra wreaths uh, just to mainly hide the thumbtacks and then the ledge for each window was kind of looking a little plain so I just added these extra cutouts. They're actually from the Dollar Tree and they have different shapes like a wreath or a present and I just spread them out and added some tea lights in between. Well, I should say battery operated tea lights. I still had two of these garlands left over so I decided to replace the garland that I already had around this extra window by my dining table so that all of the windows could match in that same great room so um, I decided to switch those out and put the smaller one in my Harry Potter office I do have a video showing you how I decorated the office so if you guys want to check that out I will definitely link that down below for you guys okay so back to the wall decor I noticed that all of my walls were pretty much all decorated in Christmas and then I had this random wall with this peacock painting <laughs> and it just seemed so out of place so I decided to DIY a little something. I actually had some extra gift wrap so I brought all three down and tried to decide which one I would use in order to cover the painting and make the painting look like a big giant present. So um, I ended up going with the red because I knew I wanted to do a big bow on the present and all of the other gift wrapping papers were very busy and I didn't think that the bow would stand out as much so I decided to just go with the plain red and later on I actually learned that this is actually door foil not gift wrap which was very interesting but either way it, that happened to be the only one that actually fit across my painting as well so it just all worked out perfectly and I of course just covered the front of the painting so that I could still hang the painting up on the wall and as far as the ribbon goes um, I had no idea how to make a ribbon so I really don't know what I'm doing here but I kind of just winged it and it turned out perfectly and I wasn't sure which color ribbon to choose I was 
deciding on between the peppermint ribbon or the green ribbon and in the end which is something that I usually do if I can't decide between something I usually just do both so uh, I ended up combining both ribbons and creating one like spectacular ribbon which I ended up really liking I just really wanted to bring in that pop of green onto this wall so um, that is also why I decided to combine both ribbons so as you see here I'm just creating loops with the ribbon I just kind of cut them kind of all the same size just roughly measured it and then cut it as you see here and then glued down the tips and created these loops and these are kind of like the petals of the bow and um, be careful because it is hot glue and it does seep through the ribbon so just be very careful um, if you are a child please have an adult help you and um, I just kind of fan them out and then glued them together like this to create a I mean essentially like a flower and I did end up doing the same thing with the green ribbon and created smaller loops so that it kind of fit right in the center and then I just glued both of those together at putting the green one right in the center and I kind of made it to where the green petals were kind of in between the petals of the bigger bow so that Kind of, I mean, you can kind of see in the video. And then for the middle of the bow, I created that little loop, and uh, that was pretty easy. Just tape it together in a cylinder, and then you just glue that in the center, and then you're done basically with your bow. And then I created two longer strands to be coming out of the bow so that it really does look like a big present. And I just taped those on the back of the painting. And then right where those two strands meet, I put the bow right in the center of that. And I glued that down so that it would not fall off. And be careful when you're pushing the bow down because you don't want to ruin the painting underneath. So I just gently push it down and then that still causes the petals of the bow to kind of get squashed. So make sure to kind of fluff them up a little bit and then you finally have your beautiful huge bow and present and it just looks fabulous on the wall. And this is such a great way to add some Christmas to your walls without having to buy more wall decor that is Christmas specific. So um, I would highly suggest you try this out. Okay, so like I said before, I do like to jump around a lot. So um, here I had this mat that I recently hauled and I was trying to decide where to put it. And I finally decided on placing it by the stairs. And I know that it's supposed to be a doormat, but I just didn't want it by the outside door to where everyone wipes their dirty shoes on it because I will have to store this away as well. So I just that kind of grosses me out so I just kept it by the staircase and then as I was looking through my decor I ended up finding these picks which I totally forgot about but I recently hauled them and I didn't want to add them in the tree because I just didn't want to risk ruining the tree I just really loved how my tree turned out so I had those and then I had these vases that I've never used before um, they're from the Target dollar spot so uh, you will see what I do with them. It's very, very simple, but uh, I don't have footage of it yet, but it will be towards the end of the video. And then just like my previous Decorate With Me's, uh, especially for my Thanksgiving Decorate With Me, um, I covered these Halloween candles with some peppermint ribbon and uh, I was able to make them look like Christmas candles. So it's just a tip if you don't want to buy candles for every occasion, um, especially for a tiered tray, I would suggest doing that. And then I had these bouquets that I created for the mantle. Um, I couldn't find my poinsettias and so I originally created them with roses with some glittery picks from the Dollar Tree and I finally found my poinsettias and so I switched out the roses for the poinsettias. I actually did like the roses a little bit better but I'm saving those for Valentine's Day. Okay, now we're moving on to the dining area. Um, I wanted to do something special for the lighting fixture that I have. It's not 
very festive looking so I decided to create my own little ornament chandelier if you will and I got some of this peppermint looking twine from home goods recently and I decided to just create a little knot and then thread through some ornaments one on each strand and then I just tie each one onto the light fixture and I wasn't really going for any pattern or anything but it ended up kind of looking like a pattern you'll you'll be able to tell uh, at the end but I basically just did three per light fixture and uh, it turned out perfectly I did end up adding more ornaments onto this and then you can really tell the little pattern that I went with it kind of cascades down um, starting inwards and then flowing outwards and I just really love end result and now moving on to the dining table I always start off with the tablecloth so I got two tablecloths they look very similar and they're actually by the same brand I got them both from home goods but one has gold foil and one has silver foil and I was trying to decide between both and I ended up going with the silver foil because it matched my plate settings and I did end up putting a plastic cover on top because it is a white tablecloth and food and white tablecloth just doesn't mix so I wanted to protect it as much as I could um, you can still in person see the beautiful tablecloth so that's all I wanted and right on top of that I added my place mats they kind of look like big peppermint candies and I love them so much and as the centerpiece I decided to do the tiered tray but this tiered tray was so difficult for me, especially when I had the camera turned on. I don't know why. It was just like, I, I got camera fright, I guess. <laughs> and I just started like dumping everything on there. I redid this thing like, I don't even know. I think around like eight times, to be honest. And I'm still, even today, like moving things around. So again, I will show you guys like a complete walkthrough and everything the final walkthrough um, soon but yeah I just I don't know what was going on with me especially today I don't I just have no idea but anyways um, you'll see me fiddling around with that but it is not the final tear tray just letting you know moving on to the napkins I decided to do the Christmas tree napkin folding that I did last year but this time I I saw someone on Instagram actually, Instagram or Pinterest, I can't remember, but they did the same Christmas tree napkin thing that I did last year, but they actually stood it up on their plate. And so I was like, okay, I want to do that this year. So I'm just showing you real quick how to fold the napkin like a Christmas tree. It is a very, very easy. It's kind of like napkin origami. It's actually very relaxing to do and it's just super fun when you see the final result and I love that little extra Christmas touch to the napkins it's just like it's so extra but I just I love it and I do go into more detail and break it down for you guys on how to fold it um, in my previous Christmas decorate with me from last year I will link that video down below so make sure to check that out now we have my wood and glass dome which I recently hauled and I just put my Santa Claus mug in there and two candy canes and I kind of made them look like a heart and uh, inside the Santa Claus mug I did put some pillow stuffing so that it looks a little bit fluffy kind of like his hair or maybe even his hat but it, it kind of looked odd just empty so I just decided to put some pillow fluff and then of course I had to add a candle. So I have my Christmas candle holder here. And then I put this absolutely delicious smelling candle. It says better not pout, which is absolutely perfect. And I feel like it goes along with the Santa Claus theme. And then I have my new tray here. It says for Santa. I also recently hauled this as well. I will have all of those videos linked down below for you guys to check that out. But I just placed a little boot this is from the Dollar Tree from a few years ago and then I have this little snow globe 
from 2010, apparently. It says 2010 on there, but it has Mickey Mouse. So that's why I kept it. And that is my little trio for the coffee table. I really wanted to find some cookie ornaments or something to place on the tray instead, but I had no luck this year, so hopefully next year. And I did switch out all of my towels to Christmas themed towels, so those are my bathroom and kitchen towels. And I do have a video of me uh, decorating the guest bath and the kitchen already that is already up on my channel so I will link that as well down below so that you can check it out. And I finally got my husband to place the star on the Christmas tree. I didn't have a ladder so uh, this is why I married a tall guy so that he could do these things for me. The final piece to the decor was the nativity scene. So I placed the nativity scene on this butcher paper kind of stuff. It was actually my tablecloth from last year and it seemed very just empty so I decided to add pillow fluff around to make it look like snow. And that actually completed the decor for my living room and now I will just show you a little run through of everything with some beautiful copyright free music in the background for your enjoyment of course. I will be uploading a separate video most likely on Friday with an entire house run through of all of my Christmas decor with my kitchen and coffee bar, office, everything included. So make sure to look out for that video. Other than that, please subscribe if you haven't already, give this video a big thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next video. Merry Christmas!